Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We're missing two people. I'll just do it really, really quickly. So if you're listening to it on 2x speed, slow it down. We got Dude Buddy, and then I cap OG, Scott Bossman. We've got Taria putting in the reps, Harris. We've got Tate. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Litchfield, Scott Todd. From scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. So we got a great topic. Scott Todd, we were talking about this. This is topic is near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, I'd say probably nearest and dearest to Scott Bossman's because he's getting on these consultation calls and people are overcomplicating a very simple business model. What do we do? We buy yeah. land, we sell land. Yeah. Right? That's it. That's it. But our discussion today is what are the various ways that you've seen people complicate this very simple process? Now, I say it's simple because all you have is a, you know, a seller, piece of land, and a buyer. It's really that easy and that's in that it's not that complicated. And the piece of land isn't complicated. But as, as we all know who are in the business, it's a business and there's lots and lots and lots of things going on. And as human beings, if we can complicate it even more, why not? Why not? So Scott Bossman, let's just start with you. What are the the ways that You've seen people complicate the land investing business. So I think, um, first off, I think we should iterate to people that we've been doing this a long time. So a lot of this stuff is maybe more apparent than it is to a beginner. Now, I talk to a lot of beginners on the phone. And however, uh, uh, I do feel that we have good resources. I do feel that we have very good training programs in the toolkit and and. Uh, particularly so with flight school. So I do talk to a lot of people that seem to, uh, they seem to overcomplicate processes. They seem to overthink things a lot instead of just doing the work. Uh, so that's a barrier that I think a lot of people have to get over. And I did it as well early on. There are all these things in my way, all these barriers in my way. Uh, fear, am I doing this right? Um, am, I, am I using the right tool? Am I using the right equation? You know, I, I remember having a conversation with Scott Todd when I was going through coaching about pricing. He's like, Scott, listen, you're just making it too difficult. Here's what you need to do. And I listened to him. I simplified my process. And what do you know? I was able to start acquiring properties. So I think there are all these ways. Uh, there's a lot of information out there. Uh, and people can maybe get a little bit distracted. Uh, they, they get uh, maybe shiny object syndrome when a new when a new Tool comes online, whether it's a pricing tool or a marketing tool or something like that, uh, when really uh, you just need to stay the course and do what we teach you because you're going to get there. Um, well, one thing in particular I've seen recently is that people are really, really overthinking what they're buying for a property uh, or what they're what they're paying for a property. And they're 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 nervous about being a couple hundred dollars off either way. Uh, and and then they pay for the property and then they think, oh, I'm going to be stuck with it forever. And then because they think they're going to be stuck with it forever, they don't market it and they don't market it well and they don't market it right. And I've seen people stuck with properties when I said, you know, when I've said, listen, all you need to do is get online, market that thing for 99 down, 99 a month. You're not going to lose any money on this thing. Uh, so that's another thing recently I've seen. But anyway, sorry, kind of covered a lot of stuff there, but... <laughs> No, but there, there's a lot of things, you know, to unpack there where people want to overcomplicate a simple process or solve a problem that isn't a problem. Um, you know, whenever I see these pricing tools online and people are, are, are selling them, I just roll my eyes. Like I've been doing this for 20 years and I, I've never had a, a need for a pricing tool. Like it's, it's just overcomplicating it. But I'd love to see or hear what Tria putting in the reps Harris thinks. 
Um, I I think just speaking with a lot of new land investors, oftentimes they have this fear of I'm going to do something wrong. So I'm going to offer too much or I'm going to offer too little. And even with that fear, we have processes in place to help you rectify that. If you offer too much, you know, here are the signs that you have offered too much. Um, Here are the signs that you're offering too little. Um, But I have never felt the need to, or I have never needed um, a tool after going through flight school, after going through coaching, and then just doing it. Did I mess up? Absolutely. I mean, I've sent out offer letters with the acreage instead of an offer. And then I've sent out offer letters that had nothing. <laughs> like I offered them absolutely nothing. But even in doing that, people contacted me. Did you just offer me $2.30 for my property? Like, did you just offer me nothing for my property? And we got into dialogue and we were able to still purchase property. So needing or stalling sometimes I found um, people will kind of stall, fear of the unknown, afraid they're going to do something wrong. Just do it. And I haven't seen or run into an issue in this business that couldn't be un- unsolved or unresolved. Like, no one's going to jail over any of this, right? So taking action, following the process, and I don't think there's anything you can actually do wrong that's going to hinder you in the future. Right, right. I mean, some people get like angry letters back in the mail saying, if you <laughs> mail me again, I'm going to sue you. Like, well, okay. Are you suing Visa? They send you offers all the time. Right. Right? But yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really good point. And um, uh it's it's interesting how that paralysis by analysis in that fear can take hold and um but you're right like and, and Tate says it all the time there's, there's no land emergencies like nothing's gonna happen if you screw up a pricing like maybe there's a good mess up I remember you know early on when I was using Excel this is you know like in the prehistoric days I was running the business off Excel and it was, you know, the spreadsheet was getting so small, I would double sell the same property. Well, that's a big no-no. They're getting a letter from the assessor and I'm getting a letter and I've got to get on the phone and say, oh, hey, look, uh, you know, I own my mistake. And they and it ended up being a good customer service opportunity for me. I, I actually, it was a better customer because I had to, to make that to correct that mistake. So that's, that's a really good point. But I'd love to hear from, uh, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Yeah. Um, really, when you when you look at what our business is, right, if you just simplify it to an extreme, it's buying land and selling land. That's it. We're trading papers, essentially. And if you want to take it one step further, you could say that our business is really made of a made up of two pieces, right? The buying side and the sale selling side of the business. Scott and Tari have kind of touched on the the issues that people have when it comes to buying land, right? Primarily pricing. They're afraid that they're going to overpay, whatever that means. Uh, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole because we don't have enough time on this recording. But I want to talk about the sales side, part two of the business. In another area where people get really, really worried is how do I price this stuff? They say, oh, I think I overpaid and now I, how do I price this stuff? It's very, very simple, right? And at the end of the day, this property is worth what you and your buyer agree it's worth. That's the true answer. So what's it worth? Well, look at the comps. If you've got a property in a similar area as something else that's for sale, that's probably a pretty good starting point. Now you can go higher, you can go lower. Mark, I remember you always say, you don't want to be average, right? You want your pricing to either be one extreme or the other, really high or really low. I don't know if you'd still stand by that statement today. I still but, stand by it, 100%, actually. But I, agree. I, I either want to be Walmart or Neiman Marcus. I don't want to be right. Target. Right. And so that's always what I do. When I look at comps, I say, okay, Eric Peterson is selling this for 200 down, 200 a month for 60 months. I'm going to sell mine for 249 down, 250 you know, a month for, for 72 months, I'm going to jack up the price quite a bit. And, and the reality is you've got to play with that pricing, 
throw out a bunch of ads, throw out a bunch of different price points. And maybe Eric had it spot on. Maybe he calculated it perfectly, what the maximum retail value of that property was. But don't get caught up by saying, oh, I'm leaving you know, too much meat on the bone or I'm not milking this property for every dollar. This business is about velocity. So buy a property, post it on the internet and just start marketing. Don't get hung up on, is it $150 a month or $125 a month? Go with the high one, see what happens. My guess is you'll still sell the property. So don't, don't get hung up on pricing. That's, that's another silly thing to just uh, tread water on. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's so funny. Like I haven't said it in a while, in a while but you've said it. Money loves speed. Right. I mean, I, I'm on the podcasts like, that I go on, I walk everybody through the model. Take the lowest comp, divide by four. There you go. There's your pricing. Start there. You can right. adjust from there. Right. right? It's, it's, and, it's, it's not brain surgery and it's an inefficient market. Right. Nobody you knows can, what it's worth. Mark, you can take that same equation and say, look, if I bought it for X, I want capital recovery in Y. What do you want? How quickly do you want to recover your investment? Typically, we aim for under 12 months. But if you just said, you know, I bought it for 1200 bucks. I want to recover my money in 12 months. Well, simple as 1200 divided by 12, i.e. 100 bucks down, 100 bucks a month. Now, we know that's going to yield a higher, uh, a faster capital recovery because that's not including your down payment and doc fee, but that's a pretty good starting point. You know, nobody on this call is going to argue with a deal that you recovered your investment in 12 months on. You know, nobody. It's great. We're right. loving that. No, absolutely. And, and what I love about our, our roundtable discussion is that we've hit almost every major point for Scott Todd to have like nothing left. Just oh. nothing left to even add to. You and, know um, he's got something. And I, I you know, am I, look, I, before we get to Scott, I have to publicly apologize because last week he was hazing me about my new water bottle and, and you know, it was making noise. It, actually, I heard it on the recording. And I was, I was accusing him of misophonia, like being, you know, annoyed by a very slight noise. Turns out I was wrong. That was annoying. Scott Todd, will you please accept my apology? Yes, you're, you're all golden again, Mark. All golden again. I'm glad that the uh, recordings came through and you could hear the clinking and clanking. It had nothing to do with your drinking, but the putting on the lid like a like a boss, man. I'm owning this podcast. It's mine. It's okay. Okay. Here's, here's the, uh, the other pain point is the systems. Too many times people try to complicate the systems. I see, I see it all the time. I, one of my favorite stories, it's not, I mean, it's not a favorite story, but it's a story that happened. It's a true life story. I guess we should say is I'm at a land geek bootcamp. A guy walks up to me and he says, how do you use Airtable? And I'm like, uh, I really don't. I mean, I do use it for Landmoto, but in my business, uh, you know, I don't think you need to use Airtable. But why? And he said, well, because I'm trying to figure out how to use Airtable. And I've spent about 100 hours trying to create something. And I don't know what I'm creating or why I'm creating it. And I said... <sighs> Well, what problem are you trying to solve? He said, I don't know. and I'm like, then why are you doing it? Okay, so ultimately, I think that people hear other people talk about, oh, well, I use Airtable for this, or I use Airtable for that. Okay, I understand that everybody's a little bit different. And look, if you're listening to this and you're using Airtable, well, tell me why you're using Airtable so that I can develop it into LG Pass. Like, I will, like, I don't want you to have to leave. But if you're, you know, if you're using Airtable for something, well, let's look at how we can build that into our own systems. But ultimately, you look at these systems and you got all, every bell and whistle. Well, you don't need every bell and whistle. What you need is a system that will mail and allow you to buy your properties and then will allow you to um, take that and, and close on them and sell them. That's all you need. So don't overcomplicate your systems, but yet people do it all the time. And by the way, the guy that the guy that spent a hundred hours doing that air table, he doesn't do this business anymore. So in a way, the guy literally wasted a hundred hours of his life. Literally. One, he didn't know why he was doing it. And two, 
He doesn't even do this business anymore because instead of focusing on the business and making sales and mailing and marketing and all this other stuff, he's out there trying to create a system to do something that he doesn't even know what he's trying to do. And then all of a sudden, he doesn't do this anymore. So that's 100 hours of his life he will never get back. And the look on his face, Mark, like I felt bad for him because when I said to him, well, what problem are you trying to solve? Like, what are you trying to create? What solve problem? And he said, I don't know. So if you're going to go down a rabbit hole looking for something, well, then first sit down and on a piece of paper, write, I want to fix this and then go look for the solution. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Uh, um, you know, it's it's so funny. Like, you know, we still talk about this from, from boot camp when, when people are like, oh, I can't sell land yet till I have a website and I look professional. Got to have my LLC. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, it's funny because I know that we talked about pricing too. And I had a property. And I think the other thing too is when you talk about systems, the other system that I think people try to force in there is in fact that sales system. And what I mean by that is everybody's looking for a, a certain time in which I have to sell the property by this or this thing happens. So if I, they're, they're, they're thinking about this from a very structured standpoint. If I own this property for 28 days and a half, and then and I don't sell it, then I got to go here or I got to change my price. And the first thing that most people think about is I'm going to change my price down. Well, the way I look at this, this is just all fishing, Tate. And Tate would agree. This is really mm -hmm. all just fishing. Man, I buy all these properties. I just, I just keep accumulating them. They're not going to spoil. They're not going to go out of, out of date. They're not going to expire. They're not going to vanish in the next hurricane or... Uh, whatever other natural disaster comes along, they're still going to be there intact, by the way. And then ultimately, what, I, what I'm what i going to able to be able to do is at some point in time, someone's going to come around and say, hey, you got this? Sure do. Here it is. I can pull out my back pocket and say, man, I've been sitting on this thing for a long time. Here it is. And here's the price. But we were marketing a property. And I think it was on the market for like 90 days. And we weren't getting anybody. I think we were trying to sell it cash for um, for like $8,000. 90 days, nothing. And my sales manager looked at it and she's like, maybe the price is wrong. And she went to 13,000. And within three days, it sold for cash, $13,000. So sometimes the answer isn't going down. It's sometimes it's going up. Sometimes you can have a property. And I found this a lot of times. Sometimes you have a property that you think, oh, well, this is, this is priced aggressively. Well, it's just priced wrong. And it's not always wrong high. It could be wrong low too. And that sends the wrong signal. Change up something. It doesn't always mean change up and go down. It could mean change up and go up too. No, absolutely. And people are always telling themselves a story, right? And if you're the kind of person that tells your, yourself a story, I only buy the best. Well, the $8,000 property in your mind has something wrong with it. You want the $13,000 property. Other people tell themselves a story, I only get a great deal. And they they want that deal and they, they're, they're only going to buy it if you're offering some kind of coupon with it. So, you know, but we're, you know, you, you have to have this in mind when you're doing this, like what Scott said, that, you, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be flexible and you have to take action. Um, if you're playing in tools all day long, you're not really taking the right actions. You're getting a lot of analysis. You're getting, you, you might be filling up your spreadsheet with like, it might make you feel better having this data, but really all you need to do is get one comp, the lowest one you can find and divide by four. Start there and then adjust and be flexible. Um, no tool is going to give you an exact pricing metric in an inefficient market. Even in the housing market, it's still not going to be. It's a market. It's constantly changing. It's constantly in flux. So if you're paying for a, a tool, you're you're paying for something that isn't solving anything, essentially. It's just, it's like um, a placebo effect, essentially, right? Um, I'll go to the Sprouts. I'll, I'll pay 30 bucks for some vitamin. And I'll say, oh, yeah, I feel better. Right. And I'll go to Scott Bossman. I'm like, yeah, Scott, I'm taking this. He's like, yeah, that doesn't do anything. You know, but if it makes you feel better, spend your money. What do you think, Scott? 
I agree. That's right. Scott, yeah, Scott Bossman. Is it some of these tools are just placebo effects? Yeah, I, I think so. I think I think some of the tools, uh, like I said, shiny object syndrome. You know, we all get it. Uh, how can how can I uh, how can I have bigger muscles? I'm going to take this pill, right? When when you have to do the hard work like Taria is doing, and really, if you look at it, if you keep it simple. She's doing some very simple things to maintain and grow her fitness. She's eating well. She's working out every day. Uh, she's not taking every supplement under the sun. Um, and there are a lot of supplements in this land business that a lot of offshoots from the very simple equation that we teach. So I just encourage people to keep it simple, mail, 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 market, market, market. And like Scott Todd said, I see people all the time. They're so concerned about having all their systems up and running by month four, right? Like that's not what matters at month four. What matters at month four is those rudimentary things, mailing and marketing. Don't make it too difficult on yourselves and get out there and do it. And if the numbers are what you perceive to be a little bit off, who cares? You're not going to lose money on a property. Even if you buy it at market value and sell it for interest, you're not going to lose market, uh, money. Yeah, exactly. And success leaves clues, right? Yeah. Um, again, another great Scott Todd saying. So what are the the biggest land investors using? What tools are they using? Well, we know what they're using because we use them every single day. It's LG Pass, it's Geek Pay, and we're using inexpensive virtual assistants. That's it. We're that's how we're 90% automated. We're not messing around with one-off tools here and there to solve a problem that isn't there, essentially. Go ahead, Tate. I was just going to say, <clears throat> at the end of the day, we're using tools that were created for land investors by land investors. This is all we do. That's it. We don't buy homes. We don't buy apartments. We buy vacant land. And our tools are designed to help us be the best at doing that. Nothing else. I got I got nothing else to say, Tria. My drop. I'm, I'm dropping the mic for Tate. <laughs> Very nice. Well, we're at that point in the podcast where I'm assuming we're putting Tria on the spot and asking for her tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book. If she doesn't have it, I can help her. Something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before we do that, I have to give a shout out. To our sponsor, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up the mountain of land investing. Create passive income with Scott Todd in real time. Quickly, safely, efficiently. The tuition investment ain't going to cost you nothing. We guarantee it. You're going to make back that money. 180 days or less. Cash or terms deals. Just show us your work. Your next step is simple. Get on a call with the dude buddy. Nightcap OG Scott Bossman or the Zen Master Mike Zano, thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. See if this model is right for you. All right, Tria. So um, I, I was looking to solve a problem, Scott Todd, and the issue was we wanted to kind of pull our buyers list. And we were looking for a nice, quick way to have a form generated. And so I found this website and it's an old website. So you've heard of it just ooh and ah, like you have not. And it's called card, C-A-R-R-D dot C-O. And they'll create like in three, four minutes, max landing pages, forms. Um, there is a, a trial period, and I think it's $19 a year after that initial period, but um, there are samples in there. It's really click, 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 you know, put the things you want in there, add your graphics, your logos, your information. Um, and from there, you can get a form. So I thought that was a pretty cool website. This is really cool. I, I never heard of it. How much does it cost? After, I think after trial. two weeks, it's nine. It, there's a free trial for a couple of weeks, and then I think it's nineteen dollars a month. 
No, it's I not. It's a year. True. It's a year. It's nine dollars a year for three sites, nineteen dollars a year for ten sites. Yes. Custom domain URLs, no branding, high quality images, large images and videos, no element limit, pro templates. Holy cow. I like this. This is insane. Taria. Great tip. That's my best tip, right? I don't know if it's your best. This is a good one. All going though. downhill from there. <laughs> that was a really good one. I, I was gonna, I was gonna bail you out with, um, because based on what we were talking about, as far as taking action, mm -hmm. and then adjusting from there, is uh, an oldie, a classic book. I've talked about this before. Ready, fire, aim. But yours is way better. Okay, you can use that one next week. I may not have one. All right, awesome. So, um, good podcast. Are we are we ready to do this? Are we good? Let's do it. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners. Remind them the only way that Taria is going to allow us to continually put her on the spot is if you do us three little favors. You got to follow the podcast. You've got to rate it, review it. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less, which is normally $97. And did you guys notice I changed up a word? You are now following the podcast. You are no longer subscribing because when we think of subscribe, we think, oh, it's a subscription. I've got to pay for it. Apple has now changed it to you follow that podcast. Like it. There you go. Um, one, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. 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 Not bad. So uh, Scott Bossman, Mike Zano sent me a Vox. He did. He did. And he said, ask Scott what, what gift he got Scott Todd. I've oh, seen this gift. I, I actually saw saw this gift. Oh, you saw the gift? Yeah, uh, I did. I, I don't no, know. No, no, he did not see the gift. Oh, he saw, he saw the first page of the gift. He did not see the gift. Right. I was a little late on uh, gifts, holiday gifts uh, this year, and uh, actually, I I had ordered Scott uh, this this item months ago, and it just arrived in the mail last week. But uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but he was talking about how um, he's a fan of socks and sandals. And not. That. that is a lie. <laughs> you that guys remember that? News. I do. I think I do remember that. I remember it. I remember it, too. Yeah. Um, and oh, uh, yeah. And so so I actually got him. Uh, I got him this gag gift. It's a it's a pair of socks, but it's like the sandal is not printed on a pair of white tube socks. So we we expect a, a modeling of the socks, Scott Todd, at some point. Scott Todd, you so, gotta break those out. The first you know, page of the gift is between Scott Todd and I. That's an inside joke. Wait, can can you guys hear this? Can you hear this for a minute? Oh, let's see. Can you hear this? Do you hear that? Did you no. hear anything? No. Uh -oh. Let's see if you can hear this. Hold on a second. Uh oh. Uh, wait, can you hear this? You are fake news. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You you heard that, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, anyway, socks and sandals. It's a it's a Florida Florida man thing. Yeah. T uh, do you remember when uh, Scott Tyler was walking around Ebor City with his socks and sandals? Yeah, oh, I do. I I remember it, that vividly. They wouldn't yeah. let us into that restaurant. Remember? Right. Yeah. The Columbia was looking at us like, "Sir, can you please put some closed toe shoes on?" No, yeah. or it, take your socks off. I think that was what they or, said. Or, or, or take the clean. socks off. Yeah, you know I remember say? this. I, we got kicked out of two cigar places for it. Did you get that? This is similar. That's similar to what I got. And you guys want to click on the link there? The similar product. Let's see. Did, did you guys just hear that? That what she said? Oh, no. no. <laughs> <That's just wrong. laughs> oh, here. How about this? Baloney. <laughs> Baloney. Yeah. 
This oh, is man. fantastic. <laughs> That's just so wrong. Who who am I buying this for? But I'm buying. No, that's what I'm thinking too. I'm There's to someone I'm buying right this now. for. <laughs> yeah, add to cart. I need these in my life. <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. Listen to me. There are all sorts of options. Uh, there's even yeah. There, there's I like those options, ones. Uh, for you. Those are like no, the no, quintessential no, no, no. dad no, socks. No, no, no. No, a little bit more feminine. There's a fe- there's an option for you, Tria, if you want that one. <laughs> so, anyway. Scott, Pat, I hope you enjoy. Oh wow! Don't worry, you got something coming, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. I don't mm-hmm. doubt it. It'll probably be delivered by drone or something. I, I feel badly that Mike's not on this right now, and and Eric to to put their their snarky <laughs> two cents in. Do you remember, I think it was, what, just last week we were talking about uh, stirring the pot, stirring the pot, you know? And and little did we know, little did we know that Scott Bosman, not only, he wasn't stirring the pot, he was sitting back quietly because he had already launched the the uh, the missile. It was midair. It was actually coming down. And he's just like, yep. any day now, any day now. So yep. secret, secret, secret boss man. He's like this all all podcasts. Yeah, right. Yeah. What happens? Petting his his little cat, like Blomfeld. That's so weird. <laughs> Making his evil plans. Uh. Nice. All right. Well, this is fun. Um, Tria, don't judge, but went back to the history today scott todd and that donut diet i'm telling you it is a thing i am dropping weight like crazy eating these things really wait wait a minute wait a minute i do think that that might call for another apology like a year a year of like getting slammed for okay i had your back i had your back scott that's okay take notes i i remember the last thing i remember i think i have it I think I have it in Boxer. Is Mark Podolsky saying that donut is is basically a symbol of what type two diabetes? Like yes, I think yes, I did say that. Yeah, so I mean, I can play that so that everybody could hear it. I could play that so everybody knows. But you, you, it's not that you're just eating whatever you want and then you have a donut in the morning. Like you're pretty disciplined. The rest of the I, day. So, so far today, I have eaten my donut and I have eaten a um, um, small, very small, basically uh, almost like a Philly cheesesteak, but very small. It was, I think, 400 calories or something like that. So I'm at 650 calories for the day. You know, I'll have a dinner maybe around four or 500 calories and a little snack and that's it. Not a bad day. So he factors in the donut in his macros. I that's do. Important. That's right. See, it's not just about, I mean, a donut, oh, I'm getting another donut. You know, it's, I, I'm not being smart about it, you know, so it's no problem. I'm, I'm going to get you a WWTE cup with a picture of Taria on it. What would Taria eat? And just have her looking at you like this. All day long, that cup. Well, ba- basically, it would be nothing. <laughs> be, 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 so. She's like sending you a case of bone broth. Here you <laughs> go. Yeah, it would be. It would be WWED. What would what would you drink? Well, <laughs> right. It's like very true. Yeah. Mark, so. you know what's great about the donut? I'll tell you what's really great about the donut because I've eaten donuts for, I mean, you know, we've all eaten donuts for a long time, but I went on a job interview once and I'm sitting there with HR and the the hardest question I think ever to, to be asked in an interview, and I don't know why they, well, they I know why they ask it. They ask it because it's the hardest question to answer is, what is your weakness? I mean, do you really think I'm going to tell you all my weaknesses? And I, I, I mean, yeah, there is a technical way that you should answer that question, by the way, but and I think I nailed it. But basically what happened was I'm sitting in an interview and the HR person says to me, 
what is your biggest weakness? And without missing a beat, I said, <laughs> donuts, definitely donuts. <laughs> and she's looking at a piece of paper, like writing my answers. Mm. And I said, donuts, definitely donuts. And she looks at me and cocks her head sideways. And she's like, are you serious? And I'm like, oh yeah, donuts and French fries. I mean, look at me. I, I, I can't eat that stuff. I, right. I want to eat it, but I can't. And she starts laughing. And she's like, but is that your real answer? I said, it is a real answer, but I will give you a different answer so that you could write that one down. And she just, she just laughed through the whole question because even HR knows that's a stupid question. What is your biggest weakness? So I gave her the answer and I did get the job. I, I care too much. I work too hard. Exactly. That's, that's, that's it, right? like that's, I can't that's say no. It. I can't say no. You know, I, I find myself... When I get focused on a problem, I find myself thinking about that problem. And I, I just want to bring a, a good qualified solution to the end and make it better. Right. Uh, turn your weakness into a positive. But donuts, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear Tate in, the, like, in an interview. So Tate, what's your biggest weakness? He's like putting up with dumb questions. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up. Show, showing sure. up in the office. Like, I don't want to work in an office. Uh, working, is that a valid exam? Is that a valid response? Your biggest weakness? All of the above? Reporting to the man. <laughs> reporting to the man. Uh, I'm not doing that. Let's see. What part of I'm a millennial don't you understand? I thought you knew that coming into this interview, man. Hey, hey. I think I think it'd be great if you sent a uh, the state of Nevada a demand letter saying, hey, I worked many, many years ago for f between eight and noon. <laughs> and uh, I think you owe me money with interest. <laughs> hey. that, that, would be a good, that would be a good move, but uh, yeah. might draw some unwanted attention my way. So I think I'll pass on yeah. that. <laughs> it's not the four hour work week. It's the four hour career by Tate Litchfield. <laughs> Mark, we might have an idea. That might be a good it. idea. I love that. Four hour career. The four hour career. My apologies, Tim Ferriss. <laughs> Mark, a few years ago, I'm sitting there at a at a like an entrepreneurs conference thing, and everybody around me is like working, you know, 80, 90, 100 hours a week. They're they've got their entire financial livelihood on a string, right? To, you know, like waiting for a pandemic to hit and knock it, knock their entire system out of whack, and. The, the guy's like, well, looks at me. He's like, how many hours do you work a week? And I'm like, uh, you know, probably about probably in my business, about two hours a week. And the guy, the guy says, what are you like Tim Ferriss? And I'm like, no, he, he works four hours a week. I work two hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's like, I'm like, so therefore I'm better than Tim Ferriss. That's the reality. And you know, don't, you don't have to be an entrepreneur. You don't have to work 80 hours to be an entrepreneur. If you choose me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a friend, you know, and, you know, we were talking a couple of days ago and he's like, it's Sunday. I'm so depressed because tomorrow's Monday. And I'm well, like, yep. I remember those days. The Sunday blues. Do you ever get the Sunday blues? Yeah. But it, I used to start getting them on Friday. <laughs> the, I used to get the Friday blues anticipating. Anticipating. Yeah. Monday. The weekend, the weekend going by real fast. Never long enough. So, yeah, Tate doesn't even know what the difference is. No, Tate, there's there's a, there's a thing called a weekend, <laughs> where where normal people take a break from work. It's funny. And rest. I was I was I was meeting some buddies to ride this morning, and you know we were on, on a group text, and they were all like, "Hey, what do you want to do? How much time do you have?" And I was like, "Well, I think I'm meeting with Mark at noon, so." Uh, I can, I can ride however long we want. And they're like, do you not work? I was like, no, I try not to, you know, it's like, I, I <laughs> try to avoid that at all costs. <laughs> you should show your calendar where every day is Saturday, every day is Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. I try not to do that stuff. It'll kill you. Yeah. Scott, Bo Scott Bossman, do you have any PT friends anymore? I do have PT friends and I tell you what, man, they, you know, People in healthcare work hard. I mean, we're we're talking. I used to do Monday through Friday and weekends and holidays, and a lot of my a lot of my uh, coworkers still do that. So um, they they kind of look at me and like, how the heck did you get out of this? <laughs> and we we've had some interesting conversations, but but yeah, 
healthcare workers, uh, they put in a lot of long hours out there. Yeah, absolutely. And we need them. We need them. Yeah. But if you're a healthcare worker and you're burnt out, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call. Let us help you. Um, you know what? Speaking of help, uh, did you guys hear from Matt Forbes and, and Anne Marie? Did you guys hear? Uh-huh. They, meet, they, they hit their goal. Their, yeah, I did hear that. Yeah. We'll talk about it later because I don't talk about, about them behind their back, but pretty exciting. So Matt and Anne-Marie, if you're listening to this, we're thinking of you. All right. Well, I'm going to go eat a morning bun and an almond croissant because Scott Todd only eats one donut. I'm going to eat two sweets. Drop twice the weight, Tria. Twice That's the weight. That's exactly how there it works. Go. That's exactly nice. how it works. That makes perfect sense. But... Yeah. There you go. All right. Thanks, See everybody. Ya. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.